One of them wanted to be the security guy. He claimed he was a security guy. All right, welcome to Security Guy Radio, sir. What's your name? My name is Tom Carnival. I'm the founder and CEO of Century 360. You know, I'm I'm finding more founders and and starter ups this year. It, it's amazing. Yep. It takes a lot of work to do that. Uh, you know, there's been a buzz the past three years of you know these entrepreneurs now becoming rock stars, and I uh, I like to say I started a company before it became cool. So I've been doing this uh, a little while now, about ten years, and overnight success in ten yeah, years. Yeah, right. exactly. That's, That's what, how it always happens, right? So what do you guys do? What do you specialize in? So we are an American brand that develops advanced intelligent video surveillance cameras. Why is that different than an average off-the-shelf kind of camera? So what, what we're really focused on is, is, is reducing the amount of cameras you need to secure your environment with panoramic vision. So, oh, that's important. And so we create uh, a single sensor, single lens, low cost, uh, low failure rate surveillance camera that sees everything in all directions with no blind spots and no moving parts. That's amazing. Uh, my, uh, we're shooting this on GoPro yes. and I'm, I'm Three feet away from you, but I'm seeing your entire booth. It's fascinating. Correct. Same kind of concept. Similar, right? right. So, if so, it's a, this is a, you know your GoPro now is kind of directionally mounted, right? right. So, if we had a hotel lobby or a ER emergency room or a parking lot, our types of cameras would be mounted looking down and around. So, it so obviously in the sky we're not recording, but the, the our panoramic vision of our lens, our fisheye lens, right. is actually pointed straight down. And what we've done is ha created an algorithm called de-warping. De-warping is the process of correcting a fisheye's perspective lens. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the samples here, and yep. they're flat, yep. but it's technically it's a fisheye look exactly. and shot that way. Exactly. So if we were to show you the de-warped view, you would not necessarily be able to differentiate that it is a fisheye until we show you that, yes, this is actually capturing everything and so you know I've been doing this for a lot of years and it's funny I come to these trade shows and, and it's really exciting to see people say well wait a second there's no moving parts with this isn't there a PTZ isn't there a motor in there when they see us panning and tilting and zooming around but really it has no moving parts and no blind spots so it's digital PTZ exactly right so it's all done with software now how long does it take to to I'm going to call it stitching. Maybe that's not the right word. It isn't actually. Okay. It isn't. So <laughs> it, you know, stitching is, uh, no is actually cut the, that the, out. The, the no. So stitching. No. It's, I'm glad you brought it up. It's a it's a clear differentiator, right? right? So stitching is is connecting multiple sensors together. Okay. Right. That's not. We're we're doing dewarping, which is actually one sensor, one one wide angled lens in software correction. How long does it take to dewarp an image? Is it real time? Oh yeah, it's real time. That's amazing. Instantly. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. All right, so give me some applications. What are your biggest users in this? Um, so mass transit and rail, so Chicago Transit Authority. Oh, that's um, a big one. Uh, so we have over 9,000 cameras deployed. 9,000? Yes, sir, for the CTA. Wow. So if you come to my hometown of Chicago. I come there all the time. I love and Chicago. You and you ride the blue line, brown line, purple line, or any of the rail cars, you look up in the ceiling and our camera's right there. Now, uh, I did security for Fox and Disney, and I okay. had about 250 cameras. Sure. And I'll tell you a funny story. I wish I had one of these, yeah. right? So we had everything, I'm, I'm you know, really diligent about this. I, I thought I had everything covered. I get a call one day from one of my facility workers. Yep. Slip and fall, he fell down and hurt himself. All right, well, that's no good. We gotta make sure you're sure. okay. Yeah. Let's run the camera back. Guess where he fell? He fell within a two foot blind spot of course. that I just physically could not cover because yep. of whatever reason, right? He knew. Yep. Because he, he watches all the cameras Absolutely. and a lot of them, right? This would have solved that. How many cameras, like a rough estimate, would one of your lenses replaced? Five, six? It depends. It's okay. going to, it's going to, it's going to, all the variables are going to depend. Indoor, outdoor, how high is the ceiling mounted? What is the area of car coverage? So, so, you know, you, as you clearly indicated, traditional cameras, biggest weakness is the blind spot, right? You point the camera to the left, something inevitably is going to happen on the right oh, and you're going to miss right. it. That's right. Right. And the other big issue is resolution. Even in 2015, I wish we could say, that we're seeing on the news crystal clear images of suspects. No, we're not. That we're not. No. Still, and that's still a major problem, and that's why I love waking up in the morning doing what we do. Not because, not because that still exists, but because there's still a big problem to solve in our in our world. Back when uh, you know analogs cameras were the thing. Uh, yeah. 
couldn't really help that, right? And what I always thought was interesting is that we know it's a crappy picture to begin with. Right. So why are you putting the camera up in the corner and shooting down right. on the guy's bald spot? Yep. Legally, you can't identify the guy. Absolutely. It's useless. And I know my camera was stolen, by the way, because I don't have it anymore. Right. So I don't need your camera to tell me that, right? Mm -hmm. How does your software and your uh, optics fix that problem? Because if it's a very wide, wide view, that's great for general. Yes. But can you digitally zoom in on a face? It's getting better and better. So okay. we've been doing panoramic vision for quite a number of years. We have intellectual property behind it. We have a deep, you know, you know, you know, almost up to 50 ecosystem technology partners that have integrated our proprietary SDK. And so in that entire tenure, we're getting resolution at scale. So we started oh. at two megapixel, and now we're actually up to 14 megapixel, which 14. is higher than 4K. That's right. Really? That's well, right. this my little GoPro shoots in 4K. The mistake I made is yep. I loaded it on my old PC. So 8.3 technically megapixel, right? Yeah, yep. and, and YouTube stopped loading it because it was too big. That is right. So yep. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, that was my concern. I love the 360, but I'm thinking, can I legally still see the guy's face? Now, exactly. This still is about placement. You still need the right designer to say, yes, sir. I got a 360 camera. Mm -hmm. I probably still shouldn't put it up in the corner. And <laughs> maybe Correct. if I put it at a lower level, yep. how how close can I put this to make it an effective panoramic? What I so, used to do is put cameras in light switches at doors. Right. So when you walked out the door, I had your entire head yep. on camera, right? Or does this need to be a wider view to start to get the, the wider view? The point is you shouldn't, you shouldn't guess, right? right? You should never guess. You, you know, a security director or a system integrator should should know going in at what height, at what distance, you know, is my pixel density going to equate a usable image for forensics? So we actually created a little app on your iPhone with your thumb. You can answer a couple variable questions and literally give you and show you a representation of the image of what you're going to get oh, that's at what distance. Anybody so else do that? I don't you think... can do that right now. No, you does can... anybody else do that? I haven't heard of that. Yeah, you can go to century360.com and right there we have our calculator. You can pull it up on your phone and while you're walking a site, you can say, okay, this is nine feet tall. I want to use maybe a four, a three megapixel camera and right. because my, my, my door distance is 10 feet. And your software like is going to recommend the right... Absolutely. We're going to recommend part numbers. We're even going to show you the pixels per foot density and an, an approximate image quality representation based on your calculations. Well, you don't need me as a security consultant anymore. My job's done. It's a, it's a tool, <laughs> right? We, yeah. we still have a very important You always need human a human factor. element. Absolutely. Point. So I see a lot of camera people. I visit sure. a lot of people. Uh, my general feel is this is a leader company right here. You have some advanced stuff that it, most people don't have. You're taking the lead on. Am I wrong? We're a very focused company, Chuck. I, I uh, you know, we, there's a lot of different vendors here at this trade show. We've been a vendor here. Uh, uh, we've had a stand here for about five years in a row. Uh, Nobody has an app that I know of, and I ask everybody. I like that app thing. That's amazing. It's, it's, we want to create an experience with the end user, with the system integrator that sets us aside um, in, in every way. And so part of our field of view calculators, our bandwidth calculators, our storage calculators, is, and our, and our um, image quality configuration tools, is they're free assets, free tools that people can use on the fly. And our entire goal in the design was, we want people to do it with their phone. Right. Everything, I'm checking my bank statements, I'm checking That's my true. email, I'm you know maybe trading a stock here or there, or something like that, with my thumb. I should be able to design video surveillance systems with that as well. Now, you seem a little different also than most camera manufacturers make a fantastic product. Thank you. And then their job is put it in a box and it's out the door. Sure. I see more integration on your part. Yeah. I see more design on your part. We are and, a solution right. focused, customer centric organization. Yeah. That's what we are. Um, we are not about selling a box or a lens or, a, or just a camera. We are about high level customer engagement. Um, and that is how we've grown. We've grown over 300% in, in, in less than two years. And the reason we've done that, Chuck, is because we're, we're putting the customer foot first. And it's all about the experience. So let's talk about integration. Please. I'm worried about it because it's a great thing, but it's also not a tin can and a wire, right. which was simple but secure yep. in a way, right? So when I put your cameras on my network and I put the HR system on there and the guard and the key watch, the program, all the things, very convenient, integration is great for doing data analysis, sure. right? But my hacker now has access to everything. What do you recommend for that, uh, you know, to help with that? I mean, just changing the password maybe is not enough to change the password on your camera. By the way, for my nieces and nephews who don't get this stuff, right. cameras are computers now. You can just say, that's a computer on the wall, and it right. has an IP address. That's a good way to look at it. Um, that's a really you know, fantastic topic. Um, 
Cybersecurity is a huge secure. It's, 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 it's not yet in this industry, but it's, it's going to be in a major, major way. You don't think it's hit um, cameras quite as hard? I think, unfortunately, it has. With some, some, There's been some, some news lately that, that is actually there is an infection point of, of uh, broken code that has actually happened with some hackers oh, and, okay. and products that actually has happened here recently. I've read some articles on it, so we're really concerned about it. Yeah. Um, we're dealing and developing network devices and network devices can be exposed. And uh, uh, I think our industry in a whole needs to take careful aim and focus on improving. We are in the security industry, but cybersecurity in the, in the physical realm has not been a, a, a big priority. It's like and an afterthought. Unfortunately yeah. it is, and I will tell you for our company, we're extremely focused on developing eight, eight, eight to, uh, government standards. Uh, they've come out recently with a new set of standards for secure devices. Right. Um, we, we already have HTTPS uh, in, in, encryption, um, but that's not good enough. We need to continue to innovate um, because our entire philosophy you know, in the next 10 years of our company is intelligence at the edge. Are okay. we getting to the point where we can use cameras for prevention? And that sounds like a loaded question because people assume cameras are prevention. Correct. But as you know, unless I have a guy sitting there 24 hours a day, which you can't do because his yep. eyes roll up in his head and he gets bored. Sure. Uh, how is the software getting improving to alert people to say, hey, we have an issue, we can track this guy through a system. Um, by the way, this guy's appeared in this camera every Tuesday at 4 o'clock and it's not to get a Starbucks, sure. he's doing something. What, how, are we, how are we doing with the prediction using video? Um, there's a couple companies in our, that are partners of ours that are doing behavioral analysis based on just the video. So, so they're they're on, so, but you're only as smart, you know, with with your two your variables. How, what is the quality of information that you're you're seeing? Right. And, num and number two, what is the field of view? So so we, we we try to position ourselves to to align ourselves with the video analytic manufacturers that we can give a user with one license a panoramic view that's intelligent. Instead of a narrow field of view that's low resolution, maximize the power of that intelligent uh, video with panoramic vision. The reason I, I say it is I, I teach a class and one of the things we show is the actual terrorists from the London train bombing. Of course, yeah. This busy platform, and I'm thinking about your train stations yep. in Chicago, right? Huge platform, people's coming and going, and I ask the people in the class, which one's a terrorist? And we go, ah, I don't know. But then when we teach the class, you go, oh yeah, it's these three guys. And what they did is they basically all converged and they looked up at the camera and they stared at the camera for two or three seconds. Sure. And everybody else is frozen, right. everybody's walking around, these guys are frozen, right? And that's what I was thinking, you know, if there's an algorithm that said the people that stare at cameras, we should watch them. Right. People that come to a train station and, uh, you know, carry a lot of luggage, we should watch them. I don't know, that might not be the right and algorithm, but it's something like that I think we could do. And as the resolution improves, and that's we right. can see the keys in the guy's wallet, and maybe we'll be able to read the key number, it's, you know. In order to, to get information, you have to have accurate, precise yeah. data. And in video, that means pixel density and image quality. So you're up to 4K, and I thought I thought I saw somebody that said they had a 7K camera, and I thought, what can you play it back on, mm -hmm. right? Because now the technology Very good resolution is so good that my TV at home would blow up if I tried sure. to play it on there. Uh, but it's getting there. Well, uh, this has been a great uh, a great conversation. I really Tom. enjoyed I'm, it, Chuck. It's third time's a charm, right? We you tried to it. do it in Atlanta <laughs> and right. Vegas, and we missed. We were waiting for the best but part. I'm glad we missed it. So give me your website for everybody to... Uh, www.sentry360.com, century360.com. And you're located in Chicago? Outside Chicago, we have an office uh, in, in Southern California, an office in Bangalore, an office in uh, Istanbul, and in Dubai. Excellent. Thanks for coming on Security Guy Radio. Thank you, Chuck. That was great. Yeah, that was a lot Very of fun. Good. Very Thank good, you, sir. Yeah, it's just a conversation, right? Exactly. We're not, yeah.